All right, we're going to start off at the beginning and end at the beginning. Um, by the beginning, I mean where we started three weeks ago. And I was looking at me, I can tell I'm going to get heckled today. Yeah, it always tells me to end right. a little bit and yeah. then we go back. Yeah. Okay. He was, uh, Are you saying no rabbit holes? I, well, <laughs> trying not to today, but uh, that, that, that doesn't... It doesn't work real well with me. Okay. Sometimes I just get like carried away. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, having grown up here in the Midwest on a farm in the middle of nowhere, I used to hear, was it Paul Harvey? Yeah, I like Paul Harvey. Yeah, the that's, guy who said, and now you know the rest of the story. Of the story. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, so that, this, is, this is kind of one of those things. Um, we started a couple weeks ago. I'm going to pose the question, I'm going to read the scripture again, and then this time we're going to skip almost to the punchline. Almost. Almost. Okay. And Har probably knows this part by heart by now. Okay. The question is... What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say that that made them so angry in his hometown that they wanted to kill him? Okay. So I'm going to read that scripture real quick. Um... This is Luke 4. Isaiah 61, verse 1-4? We will, yes. Yes, it is. Yep. Uh, We're going to start on page 1. And the reason we print them out is because I use the English Standard Version, and we don't have any here in the building except for the one that I use. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words as they were coming from his mouth. So he says, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. But they knew that that scripture was about the coming Messiah. So him hinting at or intimating that that these words may be fulfilled because they knew he had been doing miracles well, they, they knew there was a chance of this yeah. but that didn't make them mad because they said they marveled at his words they were like wow wow um, and you would think that somebody proclaiming to be somebody especially in their own hometown that that wouldn't fly I couldn't go back to Woodstock Illinois and you know tell everybody I was a rock star just take us being. with you we can, yeah, we can vouch for you. Exactly, that's right. <laughs> and handsome. Just bring you to There's cycle. a lot of handsome men in this room. You never and the rest of you are ladies. Um, okay. Uh, and he said, and, and they said, Is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. What we've heard that you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, and, and here's where here's where he gets himself in trouble. Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many leopards in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Nahum the Syrian. When they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. So whatever it was he said about this widow of Zarephath, and whatever it was he said about Naaman the Syrian, it had them so angry that they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of a hill on which their town was built so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. Have you ever said anything to somebody that made them so mad they wanted to kill you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay, now take out spouses. 
don't count spouses. Okay. Have you ever said anything to someone yeah. that made them so mad that they wanted to kill you that wasn't your wife or husband? Half sister. Half sister. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. It's all in the family. I I believe you have. Yeah. yeah. Which, <laughs> oh, <definitely. laughs> but if you let him say it, I'll vouch for that. It was when he talked about Elijah um, going to the widow of Zarephath, and when he talked about Elisha who is Elijah's predecessor, going to Naaman the Syrian. Um, what we do know is uh, that the widow of Zarephath was not in Israel. She wasn't a believer. She wasn't a Jew. She was, matter of fact, God sent Elijah specifically to her and her faith in him and his God saved her through a famine. Um, she and her household, she and her son were able to eat while other people were starving uh, because of her faith, because of her generosity, because of her kindness. But she was not one of the, the chosen people. She was not a Jew. And she wasn't in an area of Israel that was Jewish controlled either. She was in Sidon. If you look at the map again, um, which is the second to last page in your handout, you'll see Sidon is uh, way up along the coastline at the very top. It's, uh, it's the last city that you can see. That's in Lebanon, right? Uh, that's in Lebanon, yep. And uh, that area, by the way, was area that God had promised to the children of Israel. If you look at a map today of the Palestinian territory, the, uh, um, the West Bank, um, all these places that are still constantly at war, constantly in turmoil, they were places that God told Joshua, go in, drive the inhabitants out. The inhabitants are not your inheritance, the land is. And wherever they failed to drive the inhabitants out, to this day, to this day, thousands of years later, there's still strife and bloodshed and struggle and... So when God tells you to do something, just know that it might not even be for your moment in time. It might be something that people are still dealing with. Um, okay, are we all roughly where we want to be? Okay, Second Kings chapter five, verse one. Elisha is the prophet. By the way, if you're messing around at First Kings and you get a chance to read the tale of Elijah. And remember it says in there that it didn't rain for three and a half years. If you read the tale of when it did rain, it is riveting. Uh, remember these, you know, so much of what's in the Bible is actually, it was traumatic to the people living to in it. It was big, big news. Um, does everyone here remember what they were doing on 9-11? Yes. Yes, I was at work. Okay, so everyone remembers where they were when they heard that news yes. and what they experienced. It, it's weird. My son is 22, and he was born. Um, he was born just a few weeks later, and he came to me several years ago and said, "Dad, what's 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 9/11? I heard some people talking about it in school. What is that about?" And it was odd to me that he didn't experience that national trauma. Um, now for us oldies, yeah. perhaps Butch and I will be the only two who will get this one. Uh, do you remember where you were when JFK was assassinated? Yeah. Wasn't around. Yeah, I was. I was born. I was six months old. So, um, <laughs> but but my mom always told the story of exactly what she was doing when she heard the news and how people were just weeping. And I remember 9-11 when I, I was at work and when I saw the first footage of it, which was a few hours later, I just I just broke down and wept. Uh, we were just like sitting there, we were, all just, we were watching the television and mm -hmm. we were like, yeah. what? Yeah. That's just what I yeah. yeah. Now imagine a whole book filled with 9-11s, JFK assassinations, and good things too. You know, major things. I can't think of anything that's really good that's you know, riveting in the news. Uh. Jumping Japanese Jesus.